And to celebrate her 96th birthday in April, the palace released a photograph of the Queen with two of her fell ponies on the Windsor estate as she indulged in the hobby that's been her passion for a lifetime. The Queen, we're told, was happiest when surrounded by or watching horses, particularly at the racetrack. Joining us now, though, is Australian racing royalty, one of only three Australians to have looked after the Queen's horses when they raced in Australia, Gay Waterhouse. Gay, thank you so much for being here. It must have been a thrill to watch the Queen's colours go around a track on a horse that uh, you've been involved in. Oh, hugely. We've trained. Uh, it was the most wonderful honour when her racing manager, John Warren, made the call and said Her Majesty is going to send you Carlton House, who had already run third in the English Derby. Uh, and when the colours arrived, I'd already trained for the Queen Mother previously, so, you know, I had a, a little bit of in-house knowledge of them, but they're exquisite. What the tassel of, and everything, it's gorgeous, Paul. No, no, not at all. What sort of, uh, what sort of uh, owner um, is the Queen? She's the best. Oh, she was the best. She, she, it, you, you would call the palace and it would be arranged beforehand and then she would ask questions, always very pertinent. She always knew her subject perfectly and her horses. She knew her horses like her subjects. She knew them very well. I listened to an interview with um, someone connected to her racing history who said when she was breeding... She spent a lot of time choosing the appropriate name. We hear that she's a great wit and she loved words, just trying to land the name for the horse. Very much so. It was, uh, I suppose when you're under the yoke all the time, you're born into uh, 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 the hardest profession in the world because you're on parade the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, this was her escape. This was when the Queen could be herself girlish and, and joyous and, and enjoying the people. She loved racing people. She loved her, her trainers. She, she enjoyed listening to their talk and you know, even the ones even from the north of England that you know, were sort of more the, the everyday person. That she really related to that, mm. adored it. What was your favourite day at the track with her? Well, I think the, the most touching and beautiful time we had was just before COVID. We were able to have afternoon tea with her at a Royal Ascot, and there was only six of us there, and it was very special, very nice. Wow. She rode almost to the end of her life. Um, I think people found that quite amazing. And she had this natural affinity with, with horses, we've talked about that, but dogs as we know as well. She loved animals. She certainly did. Uh, and the corgis had to make sure that they were kept so she didn't trip over them as she got <laughs> older. Uh, and, uh, you know, only this year, uh, uh, or just, uh, you know, 18 months ago, she was riding with a friend of ours, you know, Francis Standing. Every, every uh, time there was Royal Ascot on, they'd go for a ride in the morning. It was lovely. When you're here, what's it like compared to watching it on television? Because for us, we've had the, the, the honour of being here all week. Mm. You've been able to see it for the past couple of days into the lead-up to being there tomorrow. I try to explain to people back home just how this city is, is, is buzzing in a very different way today. It's like being in a beehive. I was only thinking about it yesterday and the Queen has died and the bees have gone into a sort of frenzy because you cannot describe the, the layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of, of people mm. to go anywhere. Mm. You know, there's hundreds of thousands of people. We were in a cab yesterday uh, and the cabbie said, I've been driving 50 years. And my husband, Rob, said, you know, have you ever seen crowds like it? He said, no. He said, what about when the Queen was, uh, you know... Uh, at the coronation, he said, I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what did it mean to you? You're not one of the ten Australians chosen by the Prime Minister. You received a very personal invitation from the Royal Household to be here, Gay. What does that mean to you? Oh, uh, uh, the most... I, I, I was shocked, but I was... Not shocked, but I was uh, hugely touched, mm -hmm. Peter. I, I did, uh, you know, to say that you'd be asked to be there and to be present is a very special... Something very special that will never happen again. And also, we've, we've spent a lot of time talking about the importance of this event, the continuity to the past, but also it feels like the people that are in the streets, they are really making it very clear what they believe in, what they believe in in terms of the institution, the type of country, the type of values that they want to extend. And certainly that's the feeling I would imagine of many people that are watching us right now, that, that yes, this is part of a farewell, but it's also an absolute declaration of the type of country that people like to be part of, isn't it? I think it's the most wonderful thing. I think that by the Queen's passing, it has stamped, you know, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're part of the Commonwealth and we should be very proud of it. 
uh, and you know any the sort of anti-royalists, I think most of them have jumped the fence. <laughs> you know, it's, it's unbelievable <laughs> how strong the feeling is. You you, you know, it's, it's you say. You need an institution like this. You, yes. you need to have something higher than just a prime minister. You need to have that overhead body. You mm. know, to think that when uh, the king was sworn in the other day, 800 privy councillors came there. You know, it's just that layer that you need in politics to keep st stability. Gay okay, Waterhouse, a pleasure to talk to you, and uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Paul. Do appreciate it. Excellently said.